Brody Lennon commits to Ohio State. Let's check him out. So Brody Lennon, the Ohio tight end, he's from the state of Ohio, has committed to Ohio State. Now, this was a bit of a surprise commitment. Brody did only recently earn his offer to Ohio State. And in one of his quotes that he gave to, I think it was Bucknuts is the one I read it off of. He said, honestly, I was honestly in shock and didn't even believe it. So this wasn't an offer that Brody thought was coming or anything like that. He just went to camp thinking, hey, maybe I'll do well today. Maybe I'll get an offer. Maybe I'll get discovered by somebody else. Who knows? These Ohio State camps have been popping off like crazy. They've been offering guys like crazy at a clip that we'd never really even seen before. But Brody Lennon comes in, gets his offer, and now he is he 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 is now committed to Ohio State making a great decision for him as a tight end. He also has played some defense in high school as well, so he had that option there. But no, Ohio State wants him as a tight end. They're also going to kind of use him as like an H-back type guy, one of those guys that can also be in the backfield a little bit, do do some of that stuff. But, you know, tight end and that, that sort of area is really where he fits best. He does commit to Ohio State over the likes of Kentucky, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Penn State. He actually replaced his Penn State visit with Ohio State. So most people saw that come in at the very least that he was going to prioritize Ohio State over Penn State. He did the same thing with Wisconsin over, I think it was Pitt, uh, however long ago that was. I think that was his first visit in June that he took. And so, um, you know, guys, Wisconsin is doing a great job in the state of Ohio. Just quick sidetrack. Wisconsin's going in here and getting guys like Brody Lennon, who are a little bit underrated. Uh, go, you know, they're not like in the top 10 in Ohio, but they're going after these guys and getting them. Kind of like what we saw Michigan State do a little while back with Dan, Dan uh, Antonio. But anyway, we don't need to get into that. But uh, Brody Lennon, he is on the 24-7 composite, the number 839th national player. He is the number 41 tight end the number 28 player in Ohio his best rankings come from rivals where they have him as the 29th tight end and the number 22 player in Ohio so again this is another guy kind of like an Isaiah West where he's not super highly rated I wouldn't say that he's like the underrated variety like Isaiah West is with all you know all credit to Brody and, and uh, who he is and how hard he's worked I'm just saying like I'm not saying this is one guy that they've missed on he's actually like more of a top 100 player or top 200 player and they're just missing on him I do think that Brody Lennon has a lot of really good skills we'll watch the film here in a little bit he uh, obviously a kid from Ohio always wanted to play for Ohio State that's something that's really good um, like I said he was he was excited he was excited because he wasn't really expecting the offer to come and so when the offer did come he scheduled that visit with Ohio State right away because he knew that's where he wanted to be that he knew he had to get on campus see it all at least for the at very least take the experience right go to Ohio State and uh, whatever team is there at the end of June you know hey get them out of here I gotta go to Ohio State and check them out so uh, Keenan Bailey here's kind of what's happened with him this cycle he went after Nate Roberts so hard this is what everybody is saying I'm not you know breaking any news here so if you've watched recruiting shows you know this but he went after Nate Roberts so hard because Nate Roberts was almost a, like a lock for Oklahoma that he missed out on some of the other tight end prospects that he really could have gone after the, the the Brock guy in Ohio I apologize I forget his last name you can go look him up on 24 7 but he uh he was another guy he was going after pretty strong I believe he committed to Miami uh but uh, at the end of the day Brody Lennon I wouldn't say he's a bad replacement if you don't really have any other options and you're trying to find a second tight end at the end. A guy who catches 32 passes for 750 yards and 11 touchdowns. Granted, this isn't Georgia competition. This isn't Texas competition, but still a guy who does that. And then on the other side of the field, I mean, this guy doesn't just play offense on the other side of the field. He's playing edge defensive end and he's getting 13 sacks on the season as well. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So, I mean, maybe Brody Lennon doesn't have all the measurables and things like that that you look for. He is 6'4", 220, so does need to put on a little bit more weight in my mind. 
But at the end of the day, he is somebody that's going to come in, probably be one of those guys that's kind of lower down in the depth chart you don't hear about that maybe makes their impact coming into a game and kind of does everything. Uh, Ryan Day has really liked those guys in the past. We're thinking of like Patrick Gerd this year. You're probably going to see him doing a lot of that stuff. We're thinking of Mitch Rossi a couple years ago. That's probably the type of guy you're going to see Brody Lennon become, which to be honest, you have to have one of those guys if you are actually going to do some really good work in uh, in Big Ten football and also nationally as well. I mean, it's just that's just kind of the way it is. You need guys like Brody Lennon to come in, do that dirty work, just come in and do whatever needs to be done. So he's not a guy that's probably going to see the field as a freshman, probably not even as a sophomore, right? Uh, he's going to be a guy that rises up through the program, culture guy, does a great job. Uh, and most of all, I'm just I'm excited that he's a part of the class, right? We love Ohio guys coming into the class. I think that's fantastic. So let's watch a little bit of the film here, see what we got with Brody Lennon, and uh, I'm excited to figure that out. So, all right. Let's check it out. I had to get a new – okay, so he's over there on the side. This looks like – okay, so I got picked off. I got a new uh, media player because my other one wasn't going to play videos for some reason. Look at him. He is – Booking it down the field. Wow. From one corner of the field, kind of come on down. So I don't know how to watch this stuff at half speed yet. So I uh, have to wait to figure that out. Good hurdle there. Love to see that. Oh, he's going to he's just knocking dudes over. All right. Love to see it. Kind of some small defenders, but hey, he's big enough to knock him over and make his way there. Good little, good little fake block there. Pauses just long enough, get the guy to go by him, and then he's gone. Yep. Love to see that. You can see why this kid had 750 yards. Oh, I love when they have film like this. Uh, the old recorder <laughs> we can film. <laughs> okay, that's one of his defensive sacks there. I tried to only get the offensive ones. I may have missed a little bit and put some defensive ones in here. But, all right, oh, man, going across the field like that. Excellent. You see, he's got a little bit of shimmy to him. All right. He he hurled that one guy, kind of uh, pulled back a little bit, hesitated on that guy there. That's good to see. Some good block, a good blocking highlight here. All right. There we go. Love to see that. Went after the smaller guy. He was out in the front lead blocking. Here he is in the slot. Seam. Oh, you know, Ryan Day loves to throw those. There we go. Love to see that. All right. Coming in here. Yeah, they like – that's violent. That is aggressive and violent going after that guy. You love to see that. All right, coming out of the slot here again. Going out. Good strong hands. It just drags that kid for a couple more yards. Awesome. All right. Another lead blocker situation. Yeah. I like this kid. Another slot. Ooh, shaky. He did a good job tracking that ball. I, I would have liked to see him maybe de defend off the defensive back a little bit more, but still did a good job. That was a defensive highlight, it looked like. All right, here we go. Runs him out there. Just flips it off to him. Let him work. Yeah, they know they know this kid. He's got enough speed to be dangerous. Hard to bring him down with his size. Like I said, 6'4", 220. Not going to be known as a super huge guy at a, at Ohio State, but good. <laughs> like I said, I missed some of these uh defensive defensive highlights, but they're still fun to see. A little bit of sidearm action from the quarterback there. There we go. Some more of that elusiveness, jumping over guys. Taking guys down with them. All right, here we go. On the end. Really went after that guy. Very aggressive. All right, here in the slot again. What's this going to be, a screen or something? Nope, he's going to run down the field. He's going to get open for his guy. There we go. Oh, he had three guys around him and nobody tackled him. Ah. Oh. Break that, man. All right, good deal. 
so that's Brody Lennon. That's uh, most of his offensive tape. Like I said, there was probably some that I missed there. His whole tape was like 16 minutes long, so <laughs> it's really hard to go through all of it and cut it up and edit every single one of them. Uh, so, but I thought you know three four minutes would suffice for us. So uh, let me know what do you think. What do you think about Brody Lennon? You excited that he's a part of the class? Are you kind of like eh, maybe we would like to have a different tight end too? For me, I- I'm just glad to have Ohio kids, man. I'm glad to have Ohio kids. Give me the Patrick Girds. Give me the Mitch Ross. These those kind of guys who are going to come in, play tight end for you. Also do some H back work for you. Um, that, that's the kind of stuff that I love to see, and I love those kind of stories that you hear kids about. I mean, could you imagine if Ohio State won that Georgia game in 2022? The stories that we would be telling about Mitch Rossi, who was lining up at running back. <laughs> I mean, because he was like the only guy on the team left on the team that could pass protect for C.J. Stroud. Marvin Harrison Jr. was out. Not that he was going to pass protect, but he was out of the game. You had like all your running backs out of the game. And you need somebody to go in there and pass protect for C.J. Stroud. And Mitch Rossi goes in there and he gets it done. He puts it together well enough. And he, even C.J. had that big, long scramble. I don't remember if Mitch Rossi was in on that play or not. But still, you know what I mean. Mitch Rossi was in for that time. It was a great time uh, for him and really good highlight. Wish they would have been able to win that game. We'll see. Maybe they get it done with Brody Lennon. Maybe Brody Lennon has some kind of Mitch Rossi moment. Who knows? We'll see. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate it. Like and subscribe. And uh, I'll do my best to try and keep putting out these commit videos every time somebody commits. uh, Unless somebody just super surprises me and I'm not prepared, I'll do my best. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good one.